Today we're gonna to be talking about sandblasting wood. So specifically for me, this is a part that I made on a CNC, it is a topographical map. And you can see it's got a bunch of tiny ridges in there. Now when you go to hand sand it, that knocks down all these ridges and actually flattens out parts that I don't wanna be flattened. And the consistency of the finish afterwards, you can still see a few mill marks and I'm not really happy with it. Then I went on to figure out, okay, sanding stars that you actually attach to your drill press, that might be the ticket. It just wears down everything way too quickly and it doesn't give me the control that I want. So I looked up on YouTube, sandblasting wood. Mainly you start getting a lot of results for furniture finishing about stripping old finish off and that's not really what I wanted so I figured I'd make a video to show y'all that you can actually sand away your milling marks and leave a pretty cool texturized finish that looks great as a final product piece. Now we're gonna be jumping right into it and gonna be using these as an example to hopefully show you that it's a lot easier than you think. This is a blasting cabinet from Harbor Freight. They're actually pretty cheap. You can get one for around $100, $200, really depending on what model you're looking for. And it comes with most everything you need. Just make sure that you have a compressor that is big enough to push the amount of air that's required for your sandblaster. So I'm using glass beads as my blasting media and that's just because it's giving me the finish that I'm actually looking for and it's not really wearing away the wood too quickly. One thing to note is that every type of wood is going to react differently to the type of media that you're using. Today I'm gonna to be showing you walnut as well as ash just to show you the type of differences due to the grain structure of the wood and actually what it's wearing away. I personally think that both look great, but they are two very different types of finishes. So sandblasting really isn't that difficult. Uh, the side opens up, that's where you pour in your media just directly into the bottom. You're going to hook up your air compressor to the gun itself and then it just suctions it out, sprays it with the sand, the sand falls back down and it recycles it so they continually blast things. That's why you have the cabinet. So we've got this, this is ash, as well as a walnut piece that's already in there, and we're gonna get right after it. Now that we are done sandblasting, you can actually see that it leaves these very clean lines, just like it was designed the computer and how it was cut out on the CNC. It's not rounding over anything, but it is leaving this texture. So the grain of the wood is really going to determine how much texture you're getting. Walnut is very tight grain, so you're just going to see a few of these little striations pop out. Whereas ash has more sapwood in it, therefore you're going to see a lot more of these cuts taken out of it. Still looks great as far as being able to maintain the detail in the piece even after blasting it with glass, but you are going to have a little bit more divot in there, so more texturing overall, but it still looks fantastic and definitely not something that you'd be able to get with sandpaper. Now this one is straight off the CNC and you can see that there are CNC mill marks in there as well as strands that are hanging off each of these individual levels as it was stepping down. And these little tiny pieces that are popping off of these levels are extremely hard to sand away. Even using an X-Acto knife, all of that's extremely tedious. But once you do sand it away with a sandblaster, it leaves a nice, good finish. Now, if anybody's wondering what it actually looks like with a coat of finish on it, this is a conversion varnish that was sprayed directly onto it. And you can see that it leaves a nice matte finish. It actually shows off the grain pattern and the texture really well, but it still fills in those texturing spots, so it leaves it nice and smooth to the touch. So it's a very usable product. And lastly, here is a sandblasted piece that has been finished once again with conversion varnish, but in ash, and you can see the difference that that makes with the sapwood, where the sapwood parts are actually getting really torn up and textured, and the others are not. They're remaining shiny, if not burnished by the blasting media. So there you go. Those are all three parts all next to each other. So the one on the far right is actually straight off the CNC. The one in the middle was sandblasted and you can see that it has that white hint to it. And that's only because it's got still a little bit of blasting media embedded in it and that just needs to be sprayed off with an air compressor. 
and then the one on the far left is actually fully finished, done, ready to actually be sold as a product. I obviously only went over pieces that would actually fit inside of a blast cabinet, so mainly stuff that is going to be coming off of a CNC. But if you look at large table manufacturers like Restoration Hardware, you look at some of their finishes, that's exactly how they're doing that. So they're taking sandblasting media and they're blasting in a much bigger space. Different types of wood, you're gonna have different types of finishes, but mainly stuff coming off the CNC and you want to be able to take away your mill marks and you're just looking for a nice finished product without having to put in 30, 40 minutes of sanding just to screw up one thing and it finishes weird. So in my shop, I found that every single thing that I've sandblasted finishes extremely nicely and that is mainly with film finishes. I have not actually tried any kind of penetrating oil or a hardening wax or anything like that on top of them, but I'm sure that they would do just fine because the texture left over by the sandblasting process itself is pretty darn smooth as is. So yeah, thanks for stopping by the shop. I know it was a, kind of a weird video, but hopefully it'll help somebody out there and I hope that everybody has a great day. Bye.